Okay, so according to the rumor mill, Marvel is planning to do the whole Beyond the storyline and at the end of it all, do a soft reboot onto the Marvel world so they can introduce the mutants and the X-Men. Now, I'm going to let you know why I think doing a soft reboot is a horrible idea. And the reason behind it is, is that they've already done a soft reboot. What do they think Avengers Endgame was about when they did the five-year jump? If you look at it, every character onward from that Avengers Endgame five-year jump was more or less rebooted and went beyond what you think their normal continuation trajectory would have been. In fact, it was a deviation from whatever their trajectory was as they did a soft reboot to rebrand those characters. Look at it. When we last left Hulk, he was basically a... Didn't want to come out and play after Thanos whooped his behind. And even before that, it was clear that Bruce and Hulk were still far apart in their thinking and how they treat each other. And though in Ragnarok, Bruce was Hulk for several months before he even turned back to Banner. He was afraid to turn to Hulk again. So what happened in Avengers Endgame? They toss all of that and we see Hulk again. He's now Professor Hulk. A smart Hulk. A no longer rageful Hulk. He was basically rebooted from that initial trajectory. We didn't see the storyline that had him happen, that had him go through that journey. And it was never expressed before on the previous storylines. But because there was a five-year gap, they were able to reboot the character and have the character be what they needed it to be for the storyline of Avengers Endgame and for other storylines moving forward. Hawkeye, he was also rebooted during that phase. Yes, he lost his family, and that caused him to go on a murder spree, but he just wasn't going on a simple murder spree. All of a sudden, he was a high-class, powerful samurai, you know, Ronin character. When we never seen our Hawkeye from the MCU ever use a sword and a blade and do the melee combat he saw him doing there. We didn't see him get trained for it. We didn't see him start to specialize in it. It was, he just all of a sudden was a master assassin because he was soft rebooted. Before he just was a good archer or a great archer. So that's how they soft rebooted him. And Captain America and Black Widow. Look at how it was in Avengers Endgame. They went from these characters being on the run because of the what happened in Civil War, the Sokovia Accords and everything. And they were on the run. And now, in Avengers Endgame, Captain America's retired, able to go to meetings. And Black Widow was basically leading the Avengers until Captain America returned. Those two, based on the trajectory they were at, at best, should either still be on the run or in jail. But because a five, five-year gap happened, they felt like they could reboot these characters and place them in different spots in their lives so they don't have to be encumbered by the whole, you know, Sokovia Court incident, and they can just have these characters focus on the loss of losing half the people without any other problems that they would have had to face. We all know about Thor, so I don't even need to get into Thor. And then even moving forward, they also saw the reboot from Black Widow suddenly having a family when she, before the Avengers were her family. That was what she learned in... Captain America went to soldier was that she can be close to people, that she can, you know, have these Avengers become her family. But now she already had a family from before, from the Black Widow, because it was a soft reboot. We have Doctor Strange do a soft reboot, which now, we're not worried about the Baron Mortal storyline or the other stuff. We're now focusing on the multiverse stuff. So Baron Mortal already turned evil. Baron Mortal already did his deed. They already stopped Baron Mortal in our world because they, they tossed that aside even though I don't know how Doctor Strange was himself, you know, vanished for five years, but they tossed it all aside so they can do the multiverse storyline. And finally, we also see the strongest reboot with Spider-Man. He had to have Doctor Strange erase everyone's memory of him so he can start from scratch all over. That is the most obvious and most probably egregious sort of reboot out of all of them. Um... And I'm not saying it was bad storytelling, but what I am saying is that Marvel has already rebooted all these characters. Now, 
the problem they had was was that when they did the reboot, they didn't give us or they didn't show us the world that they rebooted these characters in. And because of that, we felt lost all these years. We have we have no idea what's going on, what's the importance and stuff like that. We know abstract terms of the multiverse, but we have nothing to ground us on. We don't know exactly uh, the context of what problems the blip possessed and what what happened because they never explored it. And Marvel should have explored what the problems the blip would have had, what problems that crime going rampant. Maybe there's a need for the Thunderbolts because now the Avengers are no longer around, so we need other heroes and other stuff, you know, and maybe a substitute or replacement Avengers, which the Thunderbolt could have tried to be. Maybe they could have done something like that, but they did not take advantage of that. So we left about the world, knowing world building. We see saber agents from the Marvels, but we have no idea what these saber agents are for and why they are important and who they are. And if Nick Fury had that much clout, why wasn't he using those saber agents in Nick Fury's secret invasion? So it leaves us with questions. And... We need to find out how to rebuild these worlds. What makes these worlds important? And the problem is, is that you keep throwing us multiverse storylines with other alternate versions of alternate people, thinking that's going to impress us. And it may impress the hard, hardcore fans, even like myself, but for the general audience, it really doesn't mean anything. They want to know when your story is going to begin. And so rebooting it, and so you can just put the mutants in there, would not work exactly. And it would just come off as you are aimless. So what I would say is in order to give the multiverse story purpose anyway, the best course of action is to have them come from an alternate world. And it would make sense because in the world that MCU thrives in, they are used to superhero or superpowered people. And... They actually, as a group, they actually turn to them for help. So they're not really afraid of somebody who's super powered. They wouldn't be afraid of them like you need them to be afraid of mutants. Because you're already, like I said, you have now a Professor Hulk. And before maybe Hulk was scary, but Hulk's not scary now. He's Professor Hulk. He's a person who you come take pictures of, you know. You have your Luke Cage who helps protect Harlem. Your Jessica Jones who helps solve cases. You have all these people who you go to, from Captain America to Thor to even Wanda. Yeah, sure, Wanda had a big hiccup in multiverse in the multiverse of madness, but guess what? Most people didn't see that. Most people she killed, she killed those people from an alternate world. In our world, she's still almost a saint. Yes, she massacred a lot of people in Doctor Strange's home, but keep in mind, Doctor Strange's home. It's a secluded area. No one goes there unless you're training to be a sorcerer, which is a very, very few people out of a group of millions and billions who live on that planet. They didn't see that massacre. I got to see it in spectacular fashion, you know, on my theater seat, but the people in the MCU world, they never saw that. So with that said, there's no reason to fear superpowered people. Now, you can say, well, what about Agent of Shields and, and humans? You know, they showed a lot of that stuff and people were afraid of the humans. Yes, that's true. However, as much as I love Agent of Shield, it's arguable if it's still considered part of the continuity, so it cannot even count. You cannot even judge it. And if, even if you did consider part that part of the continuity, that issue has been resolved or hasn't even been discussed after the fourth year of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s seventh year run. So, again, it's nothing new. And it's nothing of precedent. So, most people are not afraid of super-powered people. Now, what people are afraid of in that in the MCU world are people who come from another world and rain havoc on this one, as far as they're concerned. Because the first person who did that was Loki, and he ended up devastating New York. He ended up devastating New York so badly and messed up everything so badly that Iron Man had PTSD afterwards because he almost had to sacrifice himself to save New York. So, yeah. And then the second person we saw coming from another world 
was Thanos, and with a snap of his finger, he wiped out half the people on Earth. So, yeah, people from another world, we have great reasons to fear them. And even, even though I didn't think it was a, as good of a show as it could have been, even Secret Invasion, you know, says that these pe that people from another world are something to fear, as you have people taking over us as scrolls who are creating havoc and trying to start wars. So, yes, we would fear people from another world. And that's why the smartest thing to do is have the mutants come from another world, an alternate world, since you're doing the multiverse, and then have them, for some odd reason, be stuck here in ours. And then you can have our people now have great reasons to fear the mutants. They have great reasons not to trust them, especially since, like humans, they come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are good, and some of them are not. And since some people have, and people have a tendency of painting with a wide brush, they will see some people being bad and and go, well, that means they all are bad. So now you have a reason to fear the mutants, and now you have reasons to tell good stories about people's prejudices. Prejudices? I can't say the word. People prejudices. People. They can't. <laughs> people prejudging another. <laughs> Prejudice. <laughs> I can't make it plural. Um, but you know, now um, you have great reasons to fear people prejudging someone, and you have reasons uh, to show intricate stories that deal with that, that deal with the whole, you know, discrimination of people might based on their on how they look, them being a mutant, and also tell other stories that deals with. Uh, mutants and x-men and everything and how they relate to this one and if you're really really good about it i would give them all for this is that what they should do is use a, some the stories that have been hurt the most the brands that have been hurt the most because you want to keep those brands alive even though they haven't been doing well you want to use the x-men story with those brands so basically I would say, since you want to say, for example, you want Miss Marvel to be part of the Young Avengers and lead the Young Avengers team, and although people love Iman, people may not be as strong yet about Miss Marvel. How do you do it? You make a Miss Marvel movie and you put a mutant in it. You most likely put Rogue in it because she has strong affiliations with Captain Marvel, but you should also add in that. And therefore, now you have a way to start rebranding those characters and making those characters stronger while at the same time, Introducing us to one X-Men, almost like a backdoor X-Men movie, just as or a backdoor Rogue movie that just for Rogue's characters to, some, to a large degree. And you do that for each storyline that's been hurt and add an X-Men in it. And this way, the X-Men would get an Avengers treatment where each one of the mutant would be have, have their own movie, you know. You can have, obviously, Rogue for Miss Marvel, like I said, Storm for Black Panther, and so on. And then by the time it all comes together, and we see them, now we can see how they react and interact as X-Men. And we had them as fully fleshed characters. And because we had an opportunity to explore them in other movies as themselves, while at the same time giving our more legacy characters a chance to be rebranded so they can continue forward as well. So that way, when we go to the possibly next mutant saga, we can tell stories from both the mutants and, and our original brand's point of view and keep the stories going. So that's just my two cents. That's my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thank you. Bye.